Hi, Dave Searles here from Jones and Horan Auction Company in Goffstown, New Hampshire. Um, we have here an exceptional item that is going to be in our October 5th and 6th auction at the Radisson in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. This is a John Bliss and Company, New York uh, marine chronometer, uh, which is made by Victor Kulberg. Victor Kulberg was one of the top makers uh, of all time. Uh, Britain's uh, book on the subject says that, quote, he was one of the most brilliant and successful horologists of the 19th century, unquote. He was born in 1824 and died in 1890. Um, this has Kuhlberg's original unique flat balance system, which uh, according to, uh, vote, uh, according to uh, Tony Mercer, who, who wrote a book on uh, chronometer makers, uh, was a modification of the hardy Hartnup principle. Basically, we have a bimetallic flat balance uh, with a bimetallic leaves in the flat rim being laid out opposite to the bimetallic leaves in the balance rim, in the, uh, in the bar that goes across the balance. This would allow, during temperature changes, for, say, if it was becoming warmer, uh, the bar in the middle would expand downwards while the outer balance rim would expand inwards. So while one component of the balance is going down, the upper component is going up, and it's bringing in the weights so that the decrease of uh, middle temperature error is compensated for. So it's one of the very unique things. Before uh, Guillaume came up with his Envar alloy, it was one of the only ways uh, that people thought that they could cure the middle temperature error. And it, it did its job, more or less. Uh, what's fascinating about this clock is the history of it. Uh, John Bliss and Company in New York had their uh, master chronometer maker, A.C. Fox, who was perhaps the last great chronometer maker, who died at the age of 106 in 1973, born in 1867. Man knew just about everybody in the chronometer trade from that period and uh, had experience with them. And this watch, curiously, on the balance cock here, has a signature right at the base of the cock that says balance and spring made by A.C. Fox in 1937. Well, actually what happened was that this, clock, this uh, chronometer was acquired by Bliss and Company in uh, around 1884 or so. And, uh, and uh, it had the original balance system in it. In 1937, Fox made his own palladium uh, balance spring and invar balance to fit into the clock. So it had his uh, spring and balance for a while. And then sometime during the war, he decided to put back in the original balance and spring and reinstalled it. Uh, we have copies of uh, sheets where he compared rates on the balance um, so it's, uh, it's a fascinating thing. The only thing that we don't have is A.C. Fox's replacement balance, which might be something that can be located someday. Um, we've certainly uh, made some phone calls on this end to see if anybody knows where it might be. But uh, at any rate, uh, the watch as we have it, except for the uh, signature on the base of the cock, um, is now as it was originally and as it was first acquired by the Bliss Company. Um, Fox um, was uh, a friend with Paul Mellon Chamberlain who wrote the famous book It's About Time and uh, Chamberlain loved him because of his knowledge of American chronometer history. Um, the present chronometer which uh, has been researched by David H. Grace uh, who's a wonderful writer and done some wonderful research on Fox and on uh, other chronometers, um, uh, has, uh, has determined that uh, when the watch was first bought, it, was, uh, uh, it bore the Kohlberg number 1229, and when Bliss acquired it, they simply changed the dial to read Bliss and Company. Let's see, I don't want to quite grab it that way. At any rate, take my word for it. I'm not going to do it without gloves. 
uh, the dial uh, is uh, marked uh, Bliss and Company 1229, but the 1229 is the Kohlberg number. Um, and uh, Grace was able to find out that uh, uh, that the instrument was kept at the shop as the Crown Opener masterpiece until uh, John Lord Bliss's death. Then his wife uh, kept the instrument, and upon her death, the instrument was returned to the shop and used again as a standard. Uh, that was all before 1937 when Fox updated the instrument and uh, then it was during the war that he replaced the original uh, balance system. Um, so we have uh, the company's original ledger purchase uh, in photocopy, uh, uh, which was uh, bought from Kohlberg actually in 1885, I mean I've said 1886 before. and. Uh, when Bliss finally closed in 1956, A.C. Fox obtained the chronometer, and then it went to a very famous uh, person in the watch community, uh, V.E. Van Hosen, um, and uh, then it came on to the uh, present collector. has its inner box, has its outer box, uh, it's in incredibly good condition and uh, functioning beautifully. And it's interesting to read the papers and see the differences in rates uh, um, that uh, Fox uh, measured. Um, one comment he made was that uh, the, this current balance, this Kohlberg balance, was at the limit of, uh, of its adjustment um, for certain conditions. And uh, he recommended just leaving it alone. So here it is, an incredibly rare watch. We cannot find any example of a complete Kohlberg with this balance system uh, anywhere. We find examples of the balances and we find uh, uh, there's a photo on file with the British uh, Museum, um, but uh, not a complete watch anywhere. We see many more Kohlbergs from later dates, uh, all with uh, standard biometallic uh, balances and uh, probably with Invar balances after 1901. So, um, we have an estimate range of ten dollars to $16,000 on this exceptional piece, and uh, this one could really take off if the right uh, uh, connoisseurs find it. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at our auction, October 5th and 6th, and you can go to our catalog online um, at www.jones-horan.com and see everything we have for sale, see uh, giant photos of everything, extensive descriptions, condition reports, and uh, hope you'll have some fun at least looking at it. And you can always leave bids with us or come to the auction and bid live. Uh, if you leave bids with us, your bids are executed competitively and just as if you were there, standing in the room, even though you might leave 20000 on this if, it, uh, if the high bid is 15000 and it's on you, then you win it at 15000 So that's the way it works. We have no uh, buyer's commission. We have no sales tax in the state of New Hampshire. So what you bid and what you buy it for are what you pay ultimately. So that's, uh, that makes life very simple, and uh, it also is a very reasonable way to uh, proceed. We're one of the last auction galleries that does this uh, in the world. So thank you very much for listening, and we'll look forward to seeing you. Goodbye.